What's up, Yes Water family? My name is Rico, and today I'll be welding with the 250P AC DC by Yes Water. Okay guys, in today's video I'm using the 250P AC DC by Yes Water. This is one of their higher end machines. It's priced at $750. Uh, what makes this machine so unique is that it was aluminum. A lot of machines can't weld aluminum. This one can weld aluminum, TIG, STIG, 718, and 6010. Get all that in one package. Uh, my favorite thing so far about the machine is it has a trigger on the TIG. So whenever you're ready to strike arc, you can just press the trigger and it lets the arc go. I will have a separate video out welding aluminum with it. Today is just basic for the guys who are trying to get into welding. Like I said, aluminum is a little bit more advanced, so I'll leave that towards the end. If you're interested in this machine, you can use the code the well lab and you'll get 10% off. I'll have all the information in the description box below. Now, if you head onto their website, this is actually one of their most expensive machines. This machine is priced at $749. You do have cheaper machines. I believe their cheapest one starts off at $130. Now, I have a separate YouTube channel called The Well Lab. I have done other reviews on uh, Yes Water Machines. I actually did one on this cheap machine. Okay, so now let's talk about some features in it has 58 reviews and five stars on their website it is great for ac dc tig ac dc post mig mma suitable for aluminum and stainless steel welding suitable for 6010 uh, a lot of machines came around 6010 so i really like uh, that they give it that feature remote control trigger and amperage control a foot pedal and it also comes with a three-year warranty now whenever you buy this machine it comes with a couple of accessories it comes with your ground a stinger a stick welding stinger a tig rig and it comes with the argon hose that you're gonna need whenever you run TIG or aluminum. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weld this square tubing onto this. It's just a couple of scrap metal that I found around my shop. Matter of fact, I just got a shop. That's why you see this machine sitting on this piece of aluminum with a jack stand. I just moved in and I'm still in the building stages, but I thought I would do a video since I've been having this machine for a while. On one side, I'm gonna do carbon TIG, stainless TIG on the opposite side. I'm gonna do some 6010 and some 7018 so I can kind of get the difference and I'm gonna also talk about when to use this type of one. Okay, we first gonna do TIG. Uh, when you set up for TIG, you can grab your ground. So you will grab your ground, ground it to the table, and then you will go to your machine and put it on the positive. Once that's tight, this is gonna be your TIG rig. This actually has a button, so every time you're about to weld, uh, you push the button and it will start welding for you. This is a real good feature that they offer. If you're new into welding, this will make your day a lot easier. So you simply plug the TIG rig into the middle component along with the gas hose and that will release the gas. So every time I press this button, it will release gas and that's when you're ready to weld. Whenever you weld for TIG, uh, you need 100% argon and you will also need a gauge. You, yes, water will send you an argon hose that's gonna be connected from your uh, gauge all the way to your water machine, which gets hooked up in the back. Once you turn the machine on, what you wanna do is that you wanna make sure that the first blue roll is on the third one. The second one is gonna say 2T or 4T. So what that means with 2T, every time you weld, you're gonna press the button. When you finish, you're gonna, you're gonna uh, let go. It's gonna stop welding for 4T is more like automatic. So once you have those two settings uh, ready, you're basically ready to TIG weld. Uh, another thing that I would like to mention is that you need to have some tungsten. You can also buy that from the website. Now, if you want to get you a nice sharp point like this, Yes Welder does sell their own tungsten sharpener. You can pick that up also, and don't forget to use the code The Well Lab. Uh, with the tungsten sharpener, it just makes everything much easier. Uh, if, for those of you who don't know, tungsten is really, really hard, and it gets really hard just using your hand, using the disc, and using the drill. But this makes everything much more convenient. So once you're ready to weld, you want to stick your tungsten inside your TIG rig, and you might want to have it sticking out a qu anywhere from a quarter. Uh, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna go ahead and tack my square tubing. Whenever you TIG weld, it needs to be clean, so everything needs to be nice and shiny like I have it here. If you have paint on it, it's not gonna weld. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just put a couple of tacks. I'm gonna put four tacks, and I'm gonna do uh, my first pass TIG carbon. Then I'm gonna jump into doing some stainless so I can show you the difference. Okay, the first one's gonna be TIG. Professional word is G-T-A-W. With TIG, all you have to do is put your rod right in the middle of the top and bottom uh, plate or whatever you're welding. And all you have to do is grab that torch and heat that metal up and spread it. You're gonna go up, down, up, down. Kind of like if you're doing some type of zigzags. 
uh, as as you're doing the zigzags, you're gonna keep walking up, melting that uh, welding wire in there. By the way, I'm using a 70 S2 uh, 532. That's the only thing I had in the shop, but if I was y'all, I'll use a uh, 1 8 because a 532 is pretty excessive. Used TIG welding is used a lot in chemical plants. You do a lot of pipe welding with it. Uh, whenever you do TIG, sometimes it does leave a nice, beautiful weld. You can see all the ripples, and sometimes you do get a nice little rainbow. Okay, let's hop into some stainless steel welding. Uh, whenever you weld stainless steel with TIG, you basically weld it just like carbon. The only thing that changes is your wire and your heat. Uh, sometimes you do have to run colder whenever you weld uh, stainless uh, than whenever you run carbon, so just keep that in mind. Uh, for this video, I use 309, but uh, I'll let y'all know now that uh, for the stainless rods, 309 is carbon to stainless, 308 rod is stainless to stainless, and 316, you can actually weld both of them. Uh, both materials in this video i just have a carbon carbon to carbon and i just decided to run that stainless uh, uh metal in there just to show y'all in the video but whenever you weld stainless sometimes you get some real beautiful welds you get a nice uh beautiful uh color especially whenever you weld stainless steel pipe uh, but you use the same technique uh you go up and down like zigzags you do the same thing as uh Okay, let's do some uh, 7018 welding. 7018 is going to be one of the easiest welding procedures that you will ever learn simply because all you have to do is drag that welding rod straight across straight across the plate, touching top and bottom plate evenly. Uh, it's pretty simple. The only thing about 7018 is you have to be careful of what type of rod you use. Well, what I mean by that is the size. For this video, I use 1 8 uh, the problem for using 1 8 that is actually too big of a rod for how thin the material is. I recommend to use 332 uh, rods uh, around 75 to 80 amps. In this video, I had it at 120 amps to try to run a bigger rod, which is the 1 8 and I actually blew a hole through it. But uh, it was a simple fix. By blowing a hole, that means you're too hot. So go down 5 or go down 10. In this video, I was at 120, so I dropped it down to 115, but I was still able to fix that hole. Now uh, the thing about 718, it actually leaves some beautiful welds. It does leave some slack behind, so make sure you have a chew so you can see how shiny your weld is. 718 is used a lot in uh, pipe also. Usually you see this more in the oil field. Uh, 718 also does some, leave some beautiful welds. If you know how to run the machine right, you have a nice uh, cap on there. Uh, 718 is also used a lot in structural welding simply because it's cheaper and it's much faster than TIG welding. Okay, let's do some 6010 welding. 6010 leaves a lot of splatter, so that's why I decided to do this one last. Whenever you do 6010, you have to do zeros or O's. Some people like to call it C's. So basically what you do is if you're doing O's, you travel up, making circles, you come back down where you left off at, then you scoot up. Then you do your O, come back around to where you left off at, you scoot up. Basically, you're traveling up, doing O's. Uh, the thing about 6010 is that it leaves a lot of splatter is a penetration rod you're actually supposed to run 718 on top of that uh they use 6010 a lot on the field for like pipeline welding uh you can run this type of water uphill or downhill you can basically run it however you want uh compared to other one procedures some other weld procedures like 718 you're only allowed to go up the thing about 6010 is that it burns through paint it could, i actually seen it burn through uh water I wouldn't recommend to start off using 6010 because it's so hard to use. 6010 welding is used a lot in the pipeline industry uh, because it's so fast. All right, guys, so I just finished welding the machine. Hopefully, after today's video, you have a little bit more knowledge on getting into welding. So, uh, hopefully, I was able to teach you something new. If you are a new welder and just get into the industry, leave a comment below so the community knows. But I will have separate videos coming out with this machine uh, with Yes Welder, so stay tuned. So, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Uh, but I appreciate y'all rock with me. I'll see you the next one. Peace.